Welcome to the week six learning guide to college algebra. If you've been with us for the first five weeks, you know that we are working examples to help you with your college algebra class. And this is week six. I have four parts planned for week six, so make sure that you don't miss any of them. Um, if you would like a hard copy of our learning guide, I will link it below. That way you can access it and follow right along. So just as before, if this is the first time you're seeing my face, please make sure it's not the last by hitting that like and subscribe button. You're going to get a notification every time a new video is posted. And this particular video is going to focus on just the examples you see on the first page. Then I'll link the remaining videos for week six below so that you can access them easily. Well, let's get started. Week six, this one video, we're going to talk about synthetic division. We're also going to talk about domain. Now, this first problem, I'm going to uh, use a separate piece of paper just because I want to have plenty of room, and then I'll remove the paper when we're ready to go on to problem number two. Um, we're looking for the quotient and the remainder when we divide. And something to do and something to notice is that we are skipping a few powers in each of them. We'll have to consider that. So when we put our divisor, we're going to put it just like we would in regular numerical division, we're going to put it on the outside. Now you're also going to see that I'm going to put a 0x term in there. The reason I do that is to be a placeholder, okay? And then I'm going to put my dividend inside the house-like division symbol that we are familiar with from, like I said, numerical division. But I want you to see that I also am putting placeholders so that we can do the division properly. Now, the house part, you remember, looks something like that. All right, so now we ask ourselves, what times x cubed would give me 6x to the fourth? Let me say that again. What times x cubed would give me 6x to the fourth? That has to be 6 times x. Now, I'm going to line it up over the x term just for place value. And now we multiply. 6x times x cubed gives me 6x to the fourth. 6x times negative x squared gives me minus 6x cubed. 6x times 0x gives me 0x squared. 6x times 1 gives me 6x. And now we subtract, just like we normally would with division. The problem with this is that in algebra, it's a little harder to subtract. So it's a little bit easier if we add and change all of the signs here. So notice what I did. I would normally subtract, but it's a little easier to add and change all the signs. Okay, let's see what we got. Notice these two cancel. Then I'm left with 6x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. And then you would normally bring down. So we bring down that zero. Now we do it again. Okay. What times x to the third would give you 6x cubed? That would be 6. So we're going to line it up over the constant term. Now we multiply. 6 times x cubed gives me 6x cubed. 6 times negative x squared gives me negative 6x squared. 6 times 0x is 0x. And 6 times 1 is 6. Okay, now you normally would subtract. Again, we're going to chain, add and change all the signs here. So I'm changing that to a negative, changing that to a plus, a negative and a negative. So our first two cancel, then we get 5x squared minus 6x 
and minus six. Now we have nothing left to bring down. And I want you to notice that the power here is smaller than the power here. That tells me this is my remainder. This is my remainder. And this is my quotient. So I've got my remainder and my quotient there. Take your time with the long division. It takes a bit process. Talk yourself through it. Just like I ask those questions of myself, I want you to ask them of yourself to help you as well. Okay, I'm going to remove the extra paper then, and let's take a look at problem number two. For this problem, I want to use the Desmos graphing calculator. Now, if you're not familiar with Desmos, I will link the graphing calculator below. It's a free online graphing calculator. I think it's a good use for us um, because I want to take a look at number two. I'm going to have Desmos graph it for me, and then we'll take a look at what the question's asking. So I'm typing it in just as it was given in the problem. And there we go. Now, the thing I like about Desmos is it highlights some of these key points. So it tells me like that point is zero, one. I can easily go plot that on my graph. And this point down here is one, negative two. I can easily plot that as well. Okay, you get the idea. You can get your points, these key points from Desmos, and then you can draw your graph. Now, it's asking to state the transformations. So let's put the parent function, the normal graph of y equals x to the second. And what we're asking ourselves is, here's the regular graph in the blue that you see from Desmos. What did we do to get to the red? So let me say that again. You look at the blue one, that's the normal graph. What did we do to it to get to the red? Well, I think the easiest ones to identify are the shifts. We shifted to the right one, and we went down two. We also stretched it. Think of it like a rubber band. We stretch it. And the factor that we stretch by is actually that very first number in front, that three. That's what we stretched by to get this graph. So I hope that helps. I'm going to switch our view back so you can see the document camera just a little bit better. We've got two problems left, and these are domain questions. There are two rules for, to, for domain. Square roots cannot be negative, and denominators cannot equal zero. I want you to see in problem three and four, we obviously are dealing with the second rule because we don't even have a square root in there. So let's take these denominators and I'm gonna say they cannot equal zero. The denominator cannot equal zero. Okay, now the first one, I'm gonna try to factor. I'm going to factor into two parentheses. So I ask myself, what times what would give me 2x squared? That's 2x and x. And then what times what would give me 2? But I'm noticing this negative here, so I'm going to have to be really careful. I think there's some negatives going on. Minus, minus. Now check here. I've got 2x times negative 2. That gives me negative 4x. Negative 1 times x gives me negative x. So negative 1 times negative 1x times negative 4x would give me negative 5x. That's going to work. Okay, now break these apart. Solving them just like it would if this was equal to 0, you're going to solve the does not equal 0 the same way. So you can add your 1. You get that 2x does not equal 1. So x does not equal 1 half. Or you can add your 2 here, and you get that x does not equal 2. So your domain is everything, but x cannot be 1 half, and x cannot be 2. 
got a little different scenario going on over here on the right because I can't factor that. Okay, if this were a minus, yeah, I could factor it with like a difference of two squares, but it's not. So I have to leave it. I'm going to go ahead and subtract it on the other side because I kind of want to see that x squared equals a negative number. That's not happening, right? x squared is going to produce a positive value, so there's no way that can equal a negative 16. This simply means you don't have any excluded values in your domain. If you don't have any excluded values, that means that any value would work. And so the way we say that is that the domain is all real numbers. Now, if we're looking to write that in interval notation, you definitely can do that by saying that the domain domain begins at negative infinity and it ends at positive infinity. So I hope this helps with part one of the week six learning guide. We've got three more parts to go, so don't miss them. <laughs> Hang tight. We'll, we'll be back soon. Bye for now.